Hi, this is the first of several short videos in section 2.2 where you will learn how to name chemicals. Chemistry has a language all of its own. Early on, you learned the letters of the alphabet, which then you put together to make words, you strung the words together to make sentences, and that's how you learn to communicate with others. Chemistry has a similar process. You learn element symbols, which are put together to make chemical formulas, which are strung together to make chemical equations, and that's how we communicate in chemistry. In section 2.1, we learned that elements are made up of atoms. What you don't know yet are that atoms consist of subatomic particles, and there are actually three subatomic particles that you will work with, protons, electrons, and neutrons. Right now, I just want you to know that neutral atoms have the same number of protons and electrons. Sometimes atoms, or groups of atoms, can have a charge. And that's because the number of protons does not equal the number of electrons. This is called an ion. Why does this happen? Well, atoms gain or lose electrons to acquire stability, like noble gas elements. As seen from this diagram, ions can be classified as cations, which are positively charged, and anions, which are negatively charged. Both types of ions can have two forms, monatomic and polyatomic. If you take a look at the periodic table of elements, I've drawn a heavy black line to separate the metals from the nonmetals. Metals form cations, and nonmetals form anions. Single atoms form monatomic ions. Remember that cations are positively charged, and they are formed when metal atoms lose electrons. There are two types of elements on the periodic table. There are the group A elements, which are representative elements, and the group B elements, which are called transition elements. We're going to focus in on group A representative metals, which are columns 1A, 2A, and 3A. We can come up with a charge for any element in these columns because the charge number is equal to the group number next to the letter A. Once we have the charge, we can write the chemical formula, and to name the chemical formula, we will take the element name and add the word ion to it. By looking at this periodic table, we will identify columns 1A, 2A, and 3A. Notice that the charge of each of the columns is identical to the letter next to the letter A. Representative metals will only ever have one single charge to represent them. Group B elements are transition metals and they have the possibility of having more than one charge. You should be familiar with the transition metals seen on the page. You don't have to memorize the charges. There will be ways that I will teach you on how to identify which charge is being used. To name ions that are in this form, you take the element name, you place in parentheses the charge number as a Roman numeral, and then you add the word ion. Transition metals are in group B. There is no way to identify the charge like we did in columns 1A, 2A, and 3A. I also want to point out this particular time that silver, cadmium, and zinc form a backwards L in this block. They are transition elements, but they only have one charge. Both zinc and cadmium are positive 2, and silver is positive 1 in charge. You do need to memorize these charges. Single atoms can also form monatomic ions that are negatively charged. These would be the anions, and they are nonmetals that have gained electrons. If we go back to the periodic table and we look up the group A representative nonmetals, which are found in columns 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and 8A, if we subtract the group number from 8, we can get the charge of the elements within those columns. And then to name them, we're going to just drop the ending of the element and add the suffix "-ide", and then "-ion". Representative nonmetals are found in groups 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and 8A.
If we focus on column 6, we take the number next to the letter A, we subtract 8, that will give us the charge for any element in that group. This is a minus 2. Notice that there is no charge for the noble gases. The noble gases are stable and they will never carry a charge. The last thing I want to point out is column 4A. We generally do not work with the elements in this column because they can have the option of being plus 4 or minus 4 in terms of charge. All right, let's do some practice. We're going to write the formula for each ion and name it. We're going to start off with calcium. If we go to our periodic table, you will notice that it is right here. It is in column 2, and so its charge is going to be plus 2. So we're going to write the symbol for calcium, and then we are going to put the plus 2 as a superscript. We're going to skip chromium for a second and go to chlorine. Chlorine is on the other side of the table, which is right here. It has a charge of negative 1, so we're going to write the symbol, and then we'll put the negative 1 as a superscript. And sulfur is right next door. You can see it has a minus 2, so we'll write S minus 2. Now I skipped chromium because chromium is found somewhere in this area. It is a transition metal. The symbol for chromium is Cr, and if you remember from a few slides back, that transition metals can have more than one charge. Chromium can be either a plus 2 or a plus 3 ion. So we're going to talk about both in this section. Now to name these, remember that cations take, just take the regular element name, which in this case is calcium, and we tack on the word ion. For chromium, the difference is we will put a Roman numeral behind it to represent the charge of the ion. So that was what chromium 2 looks like and chromium 3. For the latter two, these are anions and they will all end in ide. So even though chlorine ends with an I-N-E, we're going to change that to I-D-E. It's optional whether you want to put the word ion behind it. And for sulfur, we're going to get rid of the ending, and we're going to add ide as well. Now it's your turn. I want you to write the formula for each of the ions below and name it. Stop the video, and when you're ready to look at the answers, turn it back on. All right, so notice that aluminum is going to be a plus 3 ion and it's called the aluminum ion. Zinc is one of those transition elements that only has more than one charge, and so it has a plus two charge. And because it only has one charge, we will not put the Roman numeral behind it, so it's just called the zinc ion. Iron is going to be found somewhere in this area right here. Remember that it can be either plus two or plus three. Once again, there will be a way for you to identify which charge to use, and I will talk about that in the next video. So you have either iron Roman numeral 2 ion or iron Roman numeral 3 ion. And last but not least, we have phosphorus, and phosphorus is minus 3 charge. Remember that nonmetals end in ide, so we're going to get rid of the ending and add ide to get phosphide ion. See you in the next section.